Good afternoon and welcome back to the 120s. Today we are talking about the Kiev 60. An absolute beast of a camera. Just look at the size of that. It is huge and it's heavy. Um, but it's actually a really good camera. By the standards of most of the videos on this channel, this is actually quite a modern camera. So this, uh, the first Kiev 60 was built in 1984 and they carried on making it through to 1999. It was made in the factories of Kiev, as the name might suggest, in Ukraine. Um, Production started in 1984 and carried through to 1999. So in fact, it spanned both the era when uh, Ukraine was part of the Soviet Union and also when it wasn't part of the Soviet Union after the collapse of the Soviet Union in 1991. But it is generally referred to, and all Kiev cameras are referred to as Soviet cameras. Uh, there is a, a myth that is oft dispelled, um, which is that this is a Soviet copy of the Pentagon 6. It is not. The, it obviously follows a lot of the uh, kind of uh, form factor of the Pentagon 6. But there's a lot of innovation in here and if anything it is a slightly better camera. The only thing it shares with the Pentagon 6, in fact the two things it shares with the Pentagon 6 are the shape of it and the, the look, also the lens mount, the Pentagon 6 lens mount. Uh, and because of that, because it shares that lens mount and because the Pentagon 6 shared the lens mount with the Xactus 6.6, there are a lot of lenses available with, in this lens mount. There are the lenses that were made in Ukraine around the same time that this was being made, which carry the label Kiev Volna lenses. Uh, then we have what I have, which is a lot of Carl Zeiss lenses. Uh, and then there are also Schneider lenses, I believe, which are more uh, closely linked to the earlier models. Um, and the production of this camera and the, the, certainly the making of the lenses spans obviously a fascinating period in European history. Post Second World War, during the uh, existence of the Eastern Bloc and the, the separation of East and West Berlin, um, and obviously the, the rise and then subsequent fall of the Soviet Union. The Kiev 60 is itself a successor to the Kiev 6C, uh, which was launched in 1976 uh, and production overlapped very slightly. So the Kiev 60, I believe, completed production in 86, uh, whereas the Kiev 60 started production in 1984 and carried through to 1999. The camera itself is fully mechanical, no battery required, except for the um, metered prism, which does require a battery. Important to note that the Pentagon 6 and the Kiev 6C 60 do not share prism mounts. So these are not interchangeable. Lenses, yes, prisms, no. Uh, it takes 120 film and shoots six by six. So you will get 12 six by six frames to a 120 film. Interestingly, I was going to do a video about a Pentagon 6 today, but I got my Pentagon 6 out, one of my Pentagon 6s, and I thought that the, the shutter on my Pentagon 6 was sounding a little sluggish. Um, so I did. I got my shutter speed tester out, uh, and the shutter speeds on this little puppy are way off, so I'm going to have to have a little look at that. I then had a quick look at my Kiev 60 and tested the shutter speeds on that, and they are... Okay, well I've obviously just taken that down to half a second, but that is a good example. Um, this camera though is purring like a kitten. Uh, in great nick. So let's get out, let's take some photos and we'll talk about it as we go. I'll also come back in afterwards and let's have a chat about some of the potential shortcomings of the Kiev 60. There are a couple, not too many, but I'll uh, talk about that later. See you out there. Right then, I am down at uh, the Seven Bridge. Uh, I haven't been down here for ages. I used to come down here on like camera tests all the time, but I've been down for a long time. And this obviously, so this that, we, that we're in right now is England, and that over there is Wales. So that is Wales. The Seven forms the boundary. Let's start off though with a shot of the bridge. Um, sky is interesting today. I am not 100% sure what film I've got in here because uh, I loaded it with film a few weeks ago when I was heading down to London but then didn't get a chance to get the camera out. I normally put a bit of tape on the back, tell me what's in there. I didn't. Um, and as such, I don't know what's in here. I think it's a Portra 400. I'm pretty sure it's a 400 ISO because I was planning to get out kind of uh, low light Anyway, I'm going to assume 400. 
and we'll see what happens. I've got a couple of other lenses with me. Uh, I've also got some rolls of black and white and I've got some filters. So we'll have a little wander around, we'll have some fun. Sky today, there's a bit of definition in it. There might be something to be had from uh, black and white and um, some filters. So let's rattle off some shots with the 400 uh, Portra and we'll go from there. All right, we've got something like um, f6.3 at a five hundredth of a second. The key f6 will actually go up to a thousandth of a second. Uh, but let's start with the five hundredth. A five hundredth, I can pre pretty easily handhold it. So let's start at five six, five hundred. So the lens we've got on at the moment is a 50 mil f4. So it's pretty wide actually. It's an infinity focus here. Oh, not quite actually. Come back a little bit. Here we go. God is within her. She will not fall. That's pretty good. I love some low level graffiti. 72.6 hours BTL KDS. Let's do 50 centimeters. I wonder if I can do a handheld self portrait. Let's try it. So 50. Oh, it's pretty close, you know. That is a proper selfie. I should be ashamed of myself, eh? So with the, with the, with the. Oh. This is sacrilege, really, isn't it? What a waste of film. The, um, the light is, is really interesting though, and there's, this cloud is sort of uh, relatively low but broken, so I'm tempted to kind of rattle off this colour and get some black and white in and we'll start throwing some filters into the mix. Actually, oh no, yeah, I'm still going to need to change lenses. Let's change lenses, let's do that. So this is the um, Carl Zeiss Jenner Biometa 80mm f2.8, which is a more kind of standard length lens breech lock so that's right Ooh, this lens is filthy let's give it a clean uh, let's take that to five six we'll stick with the same 250 let's get it to 500 and let's give it an infinity focus the sky is pretty cool though eh? what if what if we expose for the sky. So that's an F8 at 500. So let's take it up to F11 at 500. Just aim for a bit less foreground. Keep that on an infinity focus. And let's take in some sky. Let's go for a little walk around this building, I think. Get some kind of um, abandoned building vibes. Let's do that. Take it down to 125. Yeah, keep it at F11. Same again. Let's get the bright side insurance in focus. Lots of foreground, not much sky. Let's squat down here. Keep the uh, aperture quite tight. Stick at F11. Go with 125. Ah, oh, that's it. Roll done. All right. That's good. Let's get some black and white in here. Do you know what I'm going to do? I think I'm going to put. Let's put a roll of Kentmere 400 in. Oh yeah, it was Portrait 400. Check me out. Right, we're locked and loaded. I'm going to attach that orange filter straight away. It's starting to look quite interesting behind us. Didn't go too far up here. I 
do the wider lens now. Maybe I'll switch back. Obviously not going to have the, uh, the filter on the other lens, but it helps get more of the building in. And that's the end of the film. Why did you shoot that many? I don't have any more uh, Kent mirror with me. I have a Burger Pancro 400, so let's go with that. I loaded the Burger Pancro 400, took some nice enough images, but the whole roll came out with lines across it. I assume this is a fixing issue. Burger film is well known for needing a bit more fixing time than other films. I duly gave it that, but my fixer was getting on a bit, and I'm guessing that was the problem. Either way, nothing to show from that roll, apart from some interesting unintended effects. Right then, that last shoot didn't go all that well, did it? So I am out in my garage slash studio. Um, I'm gonna put another roll through the Kiev 60, just to, because we only really got one decent one out of that last, that last shoot. So let's put another roll through, see how it performs. I've also got another lens that I want to use on it. And it's, this is a Carl Zeiss Sonar 180mm f2.8. Uh, in theory, should be an amazing portrait lens. Uh, I haven't got time to set up uh, some models, so I'm just going to do a portrait of myself. There is also another problem with this lens, which is worth bearing in mind, and that is that this one is currently the uh, aperture blades are stuck. So it's stuck wide open at f2.8. Um, but I want to use it at f2.8, so it's not the end of the world. Um, so I'm going to sit myself here, and another advantage of, um, of doing this and doing some portraits is I get to use these lights. I recently backed these on Kickstarter. So they could be quite fun. Sort of stick my head in between the two and something here, something like that, maybe a bit further back. Don't know, we'll see what we can achieve with this lens. I might move those a bit further apart. That's the plan, take some shots like that. I'm gonna load another roll of Kodak Tri-X 400 into the camera, so we'll stick with black and white, and let's see what comes out of this one. All right, let's get set up. I don't have much space to work with in here. I think that that is about right. So let's see when this comes into focus. So that is about where I'm gonna, where my face is going to be. So let's just go with this, and we'll try a few options. I'm going to be using the awesome remote release from Raveni Labs, one of my favourite bits of kit. Would highly recommend this to anyone. We have a switch here, turn it on, and then push on, and push off. Well, let's do it. So, distance I think is about here. Some nice images from my garage studio, not unhappy with some of these, but some completely different unintended effects. There could be a few reasons for this, we shall discuss shortly. Okay, so we tested the Kia F60 in a few different scenarios there. I think the real takeaways for me are, uh, number one, uh, the Carl Zeiss lenses are pretty good. Uh, so we tested the 80mm 2.8, we tested the Flectagon uh, 50mm f4 and then uh, went out to the, to the studio and did some self-portraits on this monster, um, the Sonar 180mm 2.8. Uh, generally very good. Now, we'll come to the, the studio stuff and the self-portraits in a minute. Out and about, doing landscapes with this, just terrific. This 50mm is um, tack sharp and a wonderful lens. The 80mm is tack sharp and a wonderful lens. As mentioned out there, I don't have any of the Volner lenses. I also don't have any of the Schneider lenses, uh, which are supposed to be uh, even better. Um, but these um, Carl Zeiss lenses are terrific, really good. So let's talk about that uh, lens flare slash potential, I might want to call it a light leak, so I'm not too sure. So one of the big things, we'll talk about the shortcomings of this camera now. One of the things that it is well known for um, is that the inside of the mirror box, and this is going to be very difficult to show you, but we'll try. So, okay, here we go. You can just about see, right? The inside of the mirror box is a bit shiny. 
It is painted black, but it's a, it's a gloss black paint, which means that under certain conditions, you will get reflections off the inside of the, uh, of the mirror box. It's something that can be relatively easily fixed. There is a company out in the Ukraine called Arax who are still doing upgrades and general kind of repairs on all the Kiev cameras, especially the Kiev 60 and the Kiev 6C. They will sell you what they call a mirror box flocking kit, which essentially is a coating for the majority of the mirror box um, that takes away that reflectiveness of it. Um, I don't have that, this doesn't have that. So I'm assuming that the the light leaks, whatever it, whatever it is that we were getting on those um, images when I was out in the studio, self-portraits, is potentially to do with that. It's reflections from the inside of the mirror box. And obviously, I'm, I'm, if you're ever gonna get problems like that, if you're ever gonna get issues like that, then that's the situation where I've put two strong lights in front of the lens. Um, but, you know, you look at them and I'm not displeased with the results. I think they look quite nice. Another possibility for, for where those were coming from is this uh, Carl Zeiss Sonar 180mm f2.8. It's not the cleanest lens. Um, there are some cleaning scratches. I think I've managed to get rid of most of the fungus from inside it. But uh, the slight kind of haze, muck inside the lens and those sort of cleaning scratches could also give you lens flare. Uh, or cause a similar situation. Again, I'm putting it through from, a, from an optical point of view, that's a testing situation, it's difficult. There's not too many cameras, especially from this era, um, that will fare a great deal better under those circumstances. Um, but I suspect that it is probably the flocking on the inside of the mirror that he's doing. The other issues that these cameras are quite well known for is uh, frame spacing and issues with frame spacing. Um, uh, they also have shutter issues and uh, there are, they are prone to problems. There are all sorts of um, myths and fables online about the life of these cameras. One of which is uh, that there was precious little quality control in the, in the Soviet era factories uh, in Kiev and that the emphasis was on quantity, not quality. And so the, these cameras were just churned out at an extraordinary rate. However, uh, I would also say that the Pentacon 6s are not without their issues. Uh, so I don't think we can, can be entirely blamed on the Soviet-ness. So all in all, a very good camera. I may have been lucky. I may have a particularly good example here. I've had no frame spacing issues. Um, I potentially am seeing that issue with like mirror box flocking or lack of flocking and the reflections coming from the mirror box towards the end there. The really good thing about this, the Kiev F60 and the Kiev F60, is there is an absolute boatload of information out there on the internet. I'll put some useful links down below if you're looking at, at getting one of these or thinking of getting one of these. Uh, its history is well documented, its production is well documented, the problems that it has are well documented. And of course, there is this company, Arax, in the Ukraine, who are still doing repairs and upgrades to these cameras, which is just crazy, it's amazing. If they're still going, which I really hope they are. So yeah, that's it, Kiev 60, really good camera, go and get one, you should definitely try one. I have so much stuff coming up on this channel, it's really exciting actually, exciting times. I'm trying to get at least another two or three out before Christmas. Next one up will be Black and white paper reversal with a Bellini Stenopaker um, collaboration to bring a new kit to market of black and white paper reversal chemicals. Really enjoying that, having a lot of fun. Done a few tests already, starting to get some good results. So join me for that one, that will be next. Uh, after that, then I've got some um, collaborations with Lomography and we're working with some Lomography films and getting some models out and doing some shooting for that. Loads of different cameras coming out. Then after that, we're looking at the Fuji GX680, rebuilding one of those, getting it up and running. Uh, loads of stuff coming up. It's a great time to be subscribed. Please do like and subscribe if you have not already. Um, next up, black and white paper reversal. I will see you for that one. Don't miss it. It's going to be really exciting. It's, I have a feeling that is a process that I could really get into. So, uh, but I may need a bigger camera. That next. Bye bye. <laughs>